Well, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's really great to know that you're still with us this morning. A bit of a twist to, you know, the lineup. We, we talk about sports now. And first of all, uh, we'll be looking at the Super Falcons as they suffer another defeat from Japan. And Monday, Thomas is right here with us, as well as uh, uh, all the issues that we'll be talking about. But first of all, we'll be looking at the issue of the defeats that the Super Falcons have suffered. We're talking about the female football team in Nigeria. Uh, Monday, Thomas, thank you for joining us this morning on uh, a Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's all a pleasure to talk sports, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to get on with you. So let's start with the Super Falcons, the defeat that was suffered from Japan. What's really going on? It feels like we're dwindling, you know, every other time. We seem to be going down. What's happening? Yeah, and it's not hard to admit that we are going down, meaning that we are less than 10 months away from the FIFA Senior Women's World Cup in New Zealand and Australia. Well, it was another disappointing day in the office for Wandy Waldron. The head coach of the Super Falcons uh, is uh, winless in its last five games as he manages the Super Falcons. And this is not the uh, result we are looking for. We are the Super Falcons. We are, are the highest ranked team across African women's football is concerned. And a whole lot of countries look up to us. And when we see uh, that uh, the Super Falcons are not living up to the billing, it is always disappointing, but I, I must say that there are some positives we can take from that game. And uh, for a matter of fact, we are playing against the former world champions, Japan, in Kobe. We are playing their home ground. So, and it's, uh, uh, a defeat was expected, but we thought that after losing to the, uh, the world champions, the world number one country, United States of America, that we are going to lend a team or two so that we can implement it against Japan. Uh, it's the same story, Super Falcons leading by two goals to nil. Disappointing, and I'm really worried. I don't think Wani Waldrum is the man that could, of course, uh, take us to the World Cup, and not just take us to the World Cup, but give us the uh, the expected result. We are the Super Falcons, the demands are high, and we expect to be a list. The top team as far as the World Cup is concerned. We're heading to the World Cup now, Losing, uh, not winning five games in a row, it, it, it goes to show a lot. It goes to show that Nigeria are not ready. We still need to talk about this because if you look at the f uh, last five games, we've lost out. But we have notable players, uh, Ajibade and the likes, that were part of this game. And uh, one would think that you know the outcome will be different because we're talking about a friendly and almost it's almost predictable you know, what will happen when you, you, you know, you have to be encountered with the actual game? I mean, you may mention of our players. I, I would agree with you. And you just got crop of talent. We've got prolific players, players who are not just talented, but players who are hungry to push the name Nigeria forward as far as football and the world map is concerned. But it all boils down to a good manager. It all boils down to a manager who knows his onion, is all boils down to a manager who knows a tactics that could work at a particular game, a manager that could read the opponent. I don't think we have that manager. We have good players, the likes of Shishara Shola, who has won the African Player of the Year for the fifth year running, but the tactics are not always right on the pitch of play. So my problem is now the manager, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, very convinced, convinced that he's not a man that could take Nigeria forward. But it is quite confusing because you cannot fire a manager now. You cannot relieve a manager of his duty. I don't think it will be timely for Wani Waldrum to be dismissed because the World Cup is in less than eight months and we need to get our minerals right. We need, we need to ensure that these players just know what they are playing for. And I think that could be corrected. If uh, Wandy Waldrum will be uh, will be able to learn from his previous dis disappointing games. So, in other words, you're saying that you know we need a new manager. Is that what you're saying? We need a new manager, Mercy, but the time is not right. We need a we new manager, manager, Mercy. Now, but it's just less than eight months in the world. Right. 
and uh, we cannot what fire a manager now, manager and it's just based on a new manager in the World who Cup. may not and, uh, know this player, know the ability. But eight months is a lot of time. I mean, Monday. know this player, know the ability. But eight months is a lot of time. I mean, Monday. Unfortunately, we have been disconnected with Monday, Thomas. But we're hoping that we have that connection back. Uh, the female, uh, you know, team for Nigeria doesn't look like, I mean, it hasn't really looked like uh, we have been faring very well, especially, you know, with all of the outings, uh, the friendly outings prior to, you know, to all of the games that we should play. Super Falcons on top of it. So we have fantastic players. I mean, if you look at the combination, we have a lot of players that are doing really great. What exactly could be the problem? Now, Monday Thomas is saying that, hey, it might just be the fact that whoever you have as a coach is not doing the need for in, in terms of, uh, you know, administering this talent, this various talent that you have, positioning them and ensuring that we have the outcome that we want. And that's what it is. But um, what do you mean that we can have a new coach after now? Just looking at the fact that the game is very close now, eight months. I think that eight months is a lot of time you know, to understand the players, incorporate them, and, you know, push them out for the game. Mando Thomas, go ahead. What's your thoughts? All right, eight months is not a very uh, long time. Mercy, it is almost a year. I mean, eight football. months is a long time now. It is not, because it is international football. And Mercy, you don't get to see international football every week. You don't get to see international football every month. These people, they just play once in three months. That's, that's why we have international window. It's different from club window. Club window is where you get to see games week in, week out. But this is international window. Uh, the new coach will not have time to see how these ladies are playing week in, week out. So eight months might just be long on time, on the, time, on the calendar time. But when it comes to football time, eight months is a very short time. When it comes to the international football time, eight months is a very short time. So I would advise I would advise that the coach is fired. I just I just need him to be uh, talked to. Maybe tell him, hey, this is not what we want as a country, a footballing country, as the number one ranked team in Africa. This is what you should do. Put this in place. We believe in you, and hopefully gets to deliver. But I just I just believe that with Wandy Waldrum, with this kind of performance, uh, we won't go any further. But I think there is always the time for him to get things right because I, I won't be in that in that uh, particular parlance where people say that they, they should fire him I, I don't think it's a very wise decision to do so do, do you have anyone in mind difference. I mean if we're talking about replacing the coach and whoever is calling the shots is there anyone that you have in mind to take this position that's what I'm saying. Everyone is busy. We can't fire him right now. Wandy Waldrum took us to the Women's Cup of Nation, although we know how Nigeria played uh, in that Cup of Nation. And uh, football just happened to Nigeria, and we got knocked out in the semifinals. He showed his quality at the WAFCON, but for the past five games in the friendly encounters, we've, uh, we've played the likes of Japan, who are former world champions. We play United States of America, who are the current ranked team in the world, the current most ranked team in the world. So I, I think that uh, we played against really top side. We played against really top side. And uh, at the World Cup, we are going to play against World, world Cup team. So right now, he shouldn't be fired. I'm not saying that he should be fired. So we should just get to learn from his mistakes and let's see how we can uh, go forward as a country, as the Super Falcons. Well, let's move away from the Super Falcons. We have the Under-17 World Cup and the Flamingos have left for India. Now, that's it. In, in preparation for uh, the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup, uh, we suffered, you know, a loss at the end of the day to a team and... Uh, you know, we won at some point. It's, it's a bit of a back and forth right there. But I'd like to ask you, looking at the team right there, the Flamingos, what do you make of it? This group of uh, talents, I would call them talents, of course. Coming out is a lot. But what do you make of the combination? All right. Having talent in, uh, in Nigerian football has never been in doubt. Trust me, Mercy. We are talented people as far as football is concerned, both in the men's and the women's category. And the under-17, the, the Flamingos are not an exception. If you go back to how they qualified to the World Cup, they played about seven games, uh, and they won six. 
and they are even unbeaten. They scored more than 15 goals uh, throughout the qualification series, and they're now uh, heading to the World Cup. Before heading to the World Cup, they were in Turkey for a 10-day training, and they beat uh, they beat the Galatasaray ladies by three goals to one. Just like you rightly mentioned right there, they lost in their last game against Fenerbahce, and they were playing against the senior ladies of Fenerbahce. Senior ladies. I mean, these are ladies who are not in their rank. These are ladies who are supposed to play the Super Falcons, but they played against the only 17 of Flamengos. They were able to score a goal, so that's a positive you can take from that game. He finished 3 1 in favor of Fenerbahce, but I think the ladies are prepared. Bankale Oluo Kere is the head coach, and I can really bank on him. I can really bank on him to take Nigeria forward. On the 11th of uh, this month, which is in four days, we'll get to play against Germany. And that is a test. That's the game that will certainly test the quality of the ladies. And if you ask me, I think they are equal to the tax uh, from uh, from what what they've been doing so far in the qualification. And they've been in in, in a ten day campaign in Turkey. So I think they are fully ready. We should just uh, hope for the very best for the Flamengos. Well, but let's talk about the fact that you know match day one will start off with, uh, you know, the Group B stage will start off with. The Flamingos and Germany, Nigeria and Germany are that one. Germany, you know, is not a team that you should joke with. I mean, they're very, very strong. Right. If you look at, the, uh, you know, physical composition and if you look at and, uh, history over time, you understand that they have been on top of their game. So uh, looking at our performance, if you compare that with the team that we're going to be faced with, do you think that we stand a chance to you know, have a victory, more like win-win. All right. On the paper, on the paper, Germany are a better side than the Flamengos. But, you know, football is not played on the paper. Football is played on the pitch of play. They might, of course, have an upper hand because of the achievements they've uh, achieved uh, in the past few years. But I think this under-17 side, they're determined and uh, they've been showing quality. And it's time for them to show technicality. And I think they are going to do so. Man, imagine worst case scenario, we lost to, uh, we lose to Germany in the first game. And I think we can get past Chile and New Zealand and put a foot in the knockout stages. And uh, the best ever finish for the Flamingos as the World Cup has always been the quarterfinals. So getting to the semifinals is certainly going to be a great feat for the Flamingos. And I think that's what they are eyeing. If we lose to Germany, since you're saying that Germany are the toughest, I agree with you for certain, but there are chances that we can beat Chile and New Zealand. But I won't go with that uh, opinion of Nigeria losing to Germany. I think it's going to be a win or draw to the Flamingos of Nigeria in the first game that is going to be played on the 11th of this month. Well, uh, I mean, Monday, you know you haven't been great with you know, all of these predictions, right? So uh, really? are you sure you, ha you don't want to have a rethink? <laughs> Mercy, my predictions are always top-notch. So you think that this is going to be a plus for us? A win, a win or draw for the Flamingos. I mean, I've watched them play. The, the, the qualification was what really got me impressed with the ladies. I mean, seven games, uh, seven games in total, six wins, unbeaten. I know that's the African scene, but they have now shown their quality in Turkey by beating Galatasaray, although they lost their, their last uh, friendly game to Fenerbahce. I think they can go to the World Cup and stun the world. They, they might be the dark horse of this tournament, but they shouldn't be underrated by any means. But so uh, as much as we think that every other team gets into the game with a lot of expectation, I mean, nobody gets into a game hoping to lose. But uh, right. at the end of the day, you might just have a little bit of the lapses, lacuna, if you want to say. What do you think that, you know, uh, the Flamingos should be looking out for the coach now? What exactly should they be paying attention to? I mean, it's, it's the World Cup. It's a World Cup. For you to make it to the World Cup, that means you've done almost everything right uh, in, in, in your continent. And at the World Cup, it is, just, it is just for you to replicate what you've been doing in the continent, but on the bigger stage. So the coaches, I'm pretty sure they, they know how to talk to the ladies. They know how to uh, imbibe in them, discipline. They know how to tell them, hey, this is the world stage. People are watching. This is a chance for you to get a new cup for yourself. So it's certainly going to be a motivation for them to play for their career and also play for their country. So I'm pretty sure the coach will focus on that mentality part of the game. 
encouraging them, motivating them to do well so that they will not just be national hero, heroes or heroes, or they can also be uh, heroes for themselves. So it's basically that. Just work on their mentality, work on their tactics. But first of all, I think is their mentality because they'll be taking on Germany who are the big dogs in this particular game. And they'll be thinking, ha, ah, Nigeria playing against Germany, it's, it's going to be okay if we lose. They need to tell them that it's not going to be okay if we lose. That either a win or a draw. At least get a point against Germany. Then we know how to deal with the likes of Chile and as well as New Zealand. So the mentality is very key. The tactics is also very key and how you execute a game. Because in a World Cup game, favor is granted to those with the impeccable execution. If you cannot execute whatever tactics you have, if you, can, if you cannot execute whatever technicality you have, then you're going to go home on the back foot. So mentality, tactics, and execution. That is, the, of course, the key side that the coach should focus on, of course, uh, redefining for the ladies. Well, Monday Thomas, we have to let you go now. Uh, thank you so much for uh, making our time to be with us this beautiful Friday morning. All right. It's always a pleasure talking sports at you, Mercy. Say hi to coffee for me. All right, then. Have a great day. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll be looking at a second conversation. Please stay with us.